Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rebecca Chaplin, and I work with AARP North Carolina. And we're aware that you might be joining us from anywhere in the country right now. And wherever you are, what remains true is that May is Older Americans Month, and May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. Now we know that the, the pandemic, the past year and a half, has taken a toll and created a, uh, an environment of loss and um, sadness for many of us. And the intention behind this series is to support you in finding ways that you can access joy, that you can build resilience into your life. Today is part three of a three-part series. The first part, we focused on cooking and being present with our food. Second part was on gardening. And today, we're talking about gaming, the practice and process of either video or board games or any sort of game has the potential to really elevate your mood for multiple reasons. So we invite your questions and comments today. You can use the comment section that's either below the video that you're watching or to the right if you're watching on YouTube. We want to hear from you. We want to hear about your experience. And um, without further ado, we will start with our first video before we invite our guest, Bria Kirkendall, gaming expert, to join us. That's the saying. But sometimes it can be just that, all fun and games. You see, Having fun is simply one of the best ways to lighten our mood and increase feelings of contentment and relaxation. And adults who incorporate play into their lives will get a daily boost of happiness, and this is an excellent way to combat some of the emotional and physical difficulties associated with stress and aging. For example, when we have fun, we often laugh, and shared laughter is one of the best bonding experiences, and it can make two individuals feel closer to one another. It also reduces the challenges of isolation and depression. Having fun increases serotonin, or the feel-good hormone, which boosts our mood and regulates things like sleep and memory and body temperature. Speaking of boosting our mood, taking the time to enjoy yourself and spend time with others while doing activities that make you feel like yourself can help you feel less tired, more mentally awake, and more capable, which can improve our overall brain health. In fact, leisure activities and fun are also great for social interaction. They offer the opportunity to meet and engage with new people. And just like healthy diet or exercise, Fun is most beneficial when it's done over a sustained period of time. The health benefits of having fun only improve the more you do it. So the more fun you have, the more you're contributing to your own health and wellness. Making a habit of relaxing and, and engaging in activities you enjoy and spending time with people who make you happy will yield an increasingly positive benefits of consistently lower stress, positive feelings, better sleep, and better coping abilities, and possibly improved relationships. So now that we've talked a little bit about the benefits of letting go and having fun, I want you to remember how individuals have fun is limitless. And I invite you to open your imagination, embrace your curiosity, and join me as I share one of my personal favorite pastimes, one of my favorite ways to have fun, and smile, and laugh, and this activity is gaming. So today we're going to talk about gaming, both how older adults are taking video games by storm and how board games are in a renaissance of sorts that go beyond the classics that immediately come to mind. First, let's look at the youngest, or the newest, of the two offerings, video games. Video games today are a $100 billion global industry, but they began humbly, mostly just researchers and labs in the 50s creating games to test the capabilities of other systems. But things began to change by the 1960s, and the development of systems could be played on television. These simple basic boxes with limited capability, limited graphics, and limited variety translated to the home consoles that started entering people's homes and gaining popularity in the 1970s. As we entered the 1980s, Video games began to come of age, and arcades became a part of culture, and whether we were shooting pixelated Martians or running from and chasing ghosts while goblin dots or collecting coins with everyone's favorite plumber, 
video games manage to wiggle their way into our hearts and into our homes. Today, nearly two-thirds of American households or 244 million people in the United States play video games, either on a console, computer, tablet, or phone. And there's a new buzz around video games that has very little to do with younger adults. So drop in a quarter and join me as we look at some interesting data that's related to older adults and video games. When we think of video games, very often we think of young adults, young folks, or kids. And because video games have always been popular among younger adults. But I've got some news for you. The number of adults over 50 that play video games is rapidly increasing. And this was prior to 2020 when many people became a lot more tech savvy. Video games served as an avenue for people to stay connected during the challenges we've faced over the last year, and shares in gaming companies have outperformed the market since the pandemic struck. And this industry is expected to continue its strong growth. Since video games can be used at home, they have become a popular option for many consumers. In the last year, time spent gaming is up, with 35% of gamers reporting that their current playtime during COVID-19 is higher than their play from the previous year. But even before this, video games were rapidly gaining popularity amongst older adults. According to a study published by AARP in 2019, significantly more 50 and older players are playing video games at least once per month. In 2019, it was 44% compared to 38% in 2016. These players also average five hours of playtime a week. And although gaming is popular with both men and women, when it comes to players, adult players, 49% of women play compared to 40% of men. And women continue playing longer than men. Another point of interest is that video games have gone mainstream. And gamers not only have fun playing, but there's a functionality to it as well. Over one-third of those people that play video games often try new games, and with increased access and use, older adults are using gaming to connect socially, stay mentally sharp, reduce stress, and just have fun. Compared to 2016, fewer older gamers are looking to their children or grandchildren to learn about new games, and instead, they're learning these games online and offline from a variety of channels, including their social networks, ads, websites, and information within applications. Older adults have moved their gameplay to mobile as they abandon computers and laptops and turn to their smartphones and tablets to play their games. And importantly, a majority, 85% of those who play video games also play non-video games. And according to AARP, another 57% find games to be an effective way to reduce stress while staying mentally sharp and being challenged. So what types of games are older adults playing? Well, all of them. There really is no limit to people's interests, so there's no limit to what types of games that people enjoy. However, the most popular video games among the 50 plus gamers are puzzle and logic, and card and tile games, trivia, word, and traditional board game style video games. And non-technical folks are most likely to enjoy crosswords, Sudoku, Solitaire, the board games, and card and tile style games. But with all the categories I just named, it's easy to see how there may be something out there that you could find interesting or even fun. It's also important to note that video games can provide a socially interactive opportunity and an overwhelming 92% of the time that people play video games, they do it alone. But 4 in 10 report that they do interact socially within the game, engaging in both game and non-game discussion during their actual playtime. However, despite many digital opportunities, many older Americans still prefer the old-fashioned competitions, and many continue to play non-screen games such as cards, board games and puzzles. So stay tuned for our next video where we're going to look closely at board games and how some say that we're in a golden era and why would you want to miss out on that?
Okay. Well, I just wanted to bring you in, Bria, to talk before we play about the board games. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious, what do you in particular love about video games? What does it do for you specifically? Um, video games are incredibly enjoyable for me. And the most part of it is the challenge. Um, I don't really have any limitation to the type of video game I might play. Um, I have found that as I get older, the things that uh, move a little faster might be a little more difficult for me. So um, I don't necessarily play as intense video games as I used to. Um, but I also enjoy a good word game every now and then. Um, you know, small challenges, hunt and finds, and mix them up kind of word games, things like that. So. I'm curious of, for people who are watching us today or joining us, if they already play video games, what type they might play, or if they're interested in, but don't know where to start, what types of games interest them? So I invite people who are with us to type that into the comment section. Um, I, a lot of those statistics were really surprising that you shared, you know, some of the, the mental health benefits. And I just imagined you playing video, a video game with somebody who lived in a different country. You know what I mean? Because you can do that. Have you met anyone new by playing video games? I have not. I'm, I'm more of a kind of keep to myself sort of person, but I find it extremely interesting how certain platforms that are out there where um, there's entire communities of people that will just watch another individual play a video game. What? And, and, yeah, it's it's kind of bananas. Um, but but the, they really enjoy it and they may get tips or tricks or things like that so that when they go back to the game, you know, they feel a little bit more empowered. Um, it's also a way to kind of get involved in the community and decide, you know, there's so many communities out there, decide which one fits with you and jives with your thoughts and beliefs and things like that. So you can, but you can just go online and watch people play video games and uh, it's amazing. That sounds like a really good way to get started too. You know, if you are curious about a video game, but I, I know for myself, I, w I don't think I'd even know how to get started, but maybe watching somebody else do it, like hearing you talk about it inspires me to consider what I might be interested in and how it might give me a break from everyday reality, but also engage my brain. Um, so I think that's so interesting that people learn by watching others. And there's a whole community, an international community built around this. Um, we did have one question arise here. And um, Leanne wonders if older adults have played more games during COVID um, when they were, you know, uh, you know, not allowed to see people or social distancing. What do you know about that, Bria? Um, although the statistics um, are, are scarce at this point, it does appear that with the growth of the industry that mm -hmm. that is absolutely the case. Mm -hmm. And um, video games have been used a lot to help people uh, break isolation and enhance socialization. So even within the board gaming community and the video game community, it immediately became important at the onset of 2020 um, to find ways to, just like we did with our workplaces and with our schools, um, to find ways to make what may have worked at one point work better and work for more people and invite more people in and how do, how do we make it more instead of just about the video game, how do we add a socialization element? And I think that that's been really important. And I think it's one of the things that has really driven those upward trends that we've seen um, in the markets related wow. to video games. So it's almost like the the whole pandemic scenario has created an evolution in gaming. It, it kind of forced it to move forward in certain ways. You mentioned education. And so I just got thinking about video games for adults that might help them learn things. Um, is that a whole genre, educational games? Absolutely. And I want to I want to clarify, too, when we think of video games, we don't necessarily have to think of consoles or this big expensive equipment. We got to go out and hook up. And if you have a phone, you have access to these games, laptops, computers. And there are a lot of brain teaser. They're specifically geared to kind of work out your brain every day and oh, wow. they'll keep your tally of how you're doing and and kind of give you um these uh, senses of reward for performing certain tasks and you can improve it, but it never feels like work. It never feels like a, um, some tedious activity you've got to get through. It's that's kind of the tricky thing hmm. about games. Sometimes they, they get to you without you uh, get to the, get to the good stuff without it feeling tedious, you know? Uh Wow. Yeah. 
that really brings up the thought for me of this word gamification that um, that folks have been applying the principles of gaming to other things they need to do, like improving health habits or or learning something new by gamifying it. It makes it, like you said, not feel like work. Gosh, that is so that entices me. I recently actually read an article that even the CIA uses board gaming and gaming technology to train some of their agents so that they can uh, learn strategy, learn how to work wow. under pressure, learn to work from behind, um, learn to be graceful. Um, there's some really interesting articles out there. So a little off topic, but but still a neat factoid. <laughs> Very neat. You know, and you talked about using your phone, really. You don't need to go out and do anything fancy. And, you know, Leanne also added here that she has a little known fact here, some game apps on her phone and solitaire matching games um, so that we can really just find whatever intrigues us, probably just by searching the app store. Is that the best way to start if someone was interested in finding a game uh, for them? That's what I would suggest. Go a, mo a lot of free opportunities out there um, on your phone so you can download something. And if you like it, that's great. And it's like any good book or good meal you eventually find. You're not going to like everything that comes to the table. You're not every cover of the book's not going to be as good as what's inside. You know, so you may find a few that you don't really care for. But for the most part, if you stay at it, you're I promise you there's something out there for everybody. It's really incredible, the offerings that are available. Wow, that is so exciting. Okay, well, we, we don't want the time to run away with us. We want to get to board games, which you have really intrigued me on, Bria, that there is this whole world of board games out there. So watch this and we'll be back in a moment. Be here today because you're curious about board games, and maybe you think we're going to talk about the classic games tucked away in the back of a closet somewhere, but that's not the case. I would like to talk to you about just a couple of games that are available to demonstrate a wide variety of games that may interest you in this new and modern board gaming frontier. Although classic games can be fun and may hold a special place in our hearts, Today I'm excited to talk about something a little different, something exciting with more variety and depth than the types of games you may be accustomed to. And I also want to touch briefly on a few ways board games and having fun can help improve your health and wellness. So let's roll the dice and get started. Fun fact, board games date back to 49 small carved and painted stones found in a 5,000 year old mound in Turkey. We're currently in a renaissance of board gaming with thousands of new games released every year. Board games have come a long way since four hour marathons of pass and go without finding yourself in jail with no money. And many of us have played some form of a board game either as a kid or with kids, but Modern adult board gaming offers so much more varied and thematic gameplay, interesting decision making, and engaging social interaction. The new titles are all incredibly diverse, including party games, cooperative games, bird games, dexterity games, strategy games, real-time games, and much more. And there's really a game out there for everyone. There are games with, with limitless player counts and games that you can even play alone. And with so much time spent glued to our screens nowadays, board games offer us the opportunity to socialize and bond with friends away from our laptops and phones. Modern board games have spawned numerous cooperative board game styles where players must work together and coordinate their best way to achieve a common objective. Win or lose, everything happens as a team. And then there's party games. And sometimes you have a large group together and you just want to bond and have fun in the evening. And party games can be a perfect for those occasions as they support a large number of players and are often filled with social interaction, laughter, and it really just allows everybody to have a great time. And then for those of you that enjoy strategic thinking, strategy games that involve resource management, action optimization, and tactical decision making might be the category of games for you. These games are a little more complex and might be longer and involve more thought than others, so be ready to put on your thinking caps. And there's even solo games, and that's just like it sounds, games that you can play all by yourself. But it's important to note that although board games 
are good for health and wellness and they're a fun act uh, social activity, there are often great health benefits associated with them as well. So why would you want to play a board game? And what are some of the ways that's good for your health? Well, let's take a closer look at a couple of the many benefits. Board game playing increases your brain function. Because playing stimulates brain areas that are responsible for complex thought and memory formation, playing actually assists in practicing the essential cognitive skills such as problem solving and decision making. Secondly, playing games creates laughter and decreases stress. Laughter. It's like a side effect of board gaming, and it's one of the essential ingredients for creativity and an enjoyable learning experience. And Playing board games also can reduce your blood pressure. Along with reducing stress, laughing, and increasing your happy hormones, board games can be effective at maintaining your blood pressure. And finally, board games enhance creativity and self-confidence. Playing board games is a perfect opportunity to connect and open up and it also helps to display a creative side of our personalities in a non-intrusive or arrogant way. And it can be a beneficial activity for the quiet folks. If you're still skeptical of board games and what they have to offer and why they continue to remain a sustained form of entertainment for folks all throughout time, let me try to address some more misconceptions. Number one. There are the only a few board games available, and maybe you think you've played them all, or at least the ones that you think are popular or interesting, but it's just not true. Not even a little bit. There are countless board games available on the market, and people have enjoyed board gaming, as we said, since the dawn of man. Games are popular all over the world, and they have limitless design features, mechanics, strategies, and art packed into this nice little tiny compact cardboard box and your choice of what theme, style, or number of players of the game is up to you. But I guarantee you, there is literally something out there for everybody. Misconception number two. Board games are so boring. Well, maybe, just maybe, you're not aware of the exciting themes available that go beyond the traditional classic style of some variation of Roll the dice, move the token, hope for the best, wait your turn, roll the dice, move the token. You see, there's literally an entire world for you to explore. For example, picture it. Pre-modern Tuscany. You find yourself in a rustic pre-modern Tuscany where you've inherited a meager vineyard and you own a few plots of land, an old crushed pad, a tiny cellar, you've got three workers and the dreams of owning the best winery in all of Italy. Your job is to use those workers and helpful visitors to complete tasks throughout different seasons of the year. And each season is different on a vineyard, so your workers have different tasks that they can take care of summer to winter. You can expand your vineyard, build structures, plant vines, fill wine orders, and work towards the goal of owning the most successful winery in all of Tuscany. Winemaking. Yes, winemaking. A game about making wine. It's so lovely. But maybe winemaking is not for you. Maybe you prefer the pride and prejudice, intrigue, and scandal of mid-19th century England as the head of a country house in ill repair. It's far from the glory days of your estate, and you have new hope, though. A significant inheritance has made it possible for the restoration of the grand old estate and rehabilitation of your family's reputation. Defend the family's honor against jealousy. Accumulate your wealth. Expose unsavory characters who abuse the family's hospitality. And expand your house of maids, valets, footmen, and meet the challenges of lavish social events. Spread the word about your family and return them to prominence. Misconception number three is that board games are just for children. And although there are plenty of options available for younger people and families, there are countless games available that probably would not appeal to kids. Let me show you what I mean. Have you ever wanted to be a part of 221 Baker Street, mindfully solving crimes, the world's most famous detective with your buddy Watson by your side? Well, in a, there's a cooperative game where you can work alone or with others to solve mysterious cases, walk in the streets of London in search of clues, 
unraveling the strings of intrigue and answering a series of questions and comparing your de detective skills to those of the master sleuth himself. And although there are countless games that use this theme, and some are geared towards children, others are very much geared towards adults, both thematically and mechanically, which is really just fancy board game talk for how you accomplish a task. You see, not all games are designed or even appropriate for kids. The type of games you choose could also be solely based on what you're in the mood for. Let's assume that you would rather play something more relaxing, something that maybe involves nature. How about a game with birds where you play as a bird enthusiast, a researcher, bird watcher, ornithologist, or collector? You're seeking to discover and attract the best birds to your network and your wildlife preserve, and each bird extends a chain of powerful combinations in your habitat. But one more thing I want to share. What is special to me, something I would like to tell you about, are the moments that happen at the table. And what I enjoy most is the experience that some great games create, this journey of sorts. It's not necessarily about winning, and not all games are about beating other players, and some games are even designed to be played cooperatively. And I know, I know, winning's the point of the games. Well, it is. But some of the games we're discussing today and countless others attempt to provide the player or players with more of an immersive and memorable experience. And if we had the time, I would review all of my favorite games with you. But rest assured, there are plenty of avenues, outlets, resources, and videos that can help you find the game or the theme that interests you. And I encourage you to give it a try. Embrace your imagination improve your health while playing games that make you laugh, feel better, and improve your wellness. Well, I am so inspired to find a game, Bria. Um, that is, and I want to remind people watching us today that if you have a question about board games or video games, now is the time. It's not very often you get an expert in this topic in the room. Um, so you mentioned about games that were good for, you know, youth or appropriate for youth and then some that were appropriate for adults and that you might also want to gauge it based on the mood you're in, not the age that you are. And it made me think about when I'm with my um, young person that there are certain TV shows she watches that are appropriate for adults. There's a level of humor for an adult and then there's a level of humor for the kid and it's all there in one package. Are there some games like that that you found where there's uh, different levels that you can approach it at based on your age and... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's, it, you know, there's really everything out there geared to any group available. So you could have a full adult, um, over 21, um, more body sort of situation, or you can have a game that is actually complex enough for an adult to enjoy the strategy, mm -hmm. but simple enough to explain so that the child is able to um, participate and participate in a meaningful way. And, you know, it's a really great way for generations to connect with each other. Um, it's, it's some believe that um, youth today are having a harder time uh, building relationships because of all the screen time. And so games can be a clever way to create the relationship building and building social capital, if you will, um, mm -hmm. without resistance. So, yeah. Wow. I'm thinking about um, the upcoming family vacations that we all hope to have, you know, going somewhere with people we haven't seen for years. And what kind of game could I get for all these generations coming together is, you know, on my mind. And I, I think other people have things like that on their mind, too. I see one suggestion but that uh, Robert T. has, uh, also known as Bob. You can ask your friends what they play for inspiration, which is a great idea. And I invite those watching today um, to let us know what you play. Inspire others with the names of your favorite games. And um, I also see here a comment that pre-pandemic, I used to go places with friends that have the board games to play and you know you mentioned that space between when you're actually playing that you're interacting and that you know board games really create that opportunity um so i i just think that that is really interesting um let's see a question that may go back to the video games mm -hmm. are there games that you would recommend for let's say you have um parents and children or grandparents and grandchildren or 
or sisters or bro, you know, siblings, and they want to play a game together, just maybe in an insular environment, um, but they live far apart. What, what types of games might be most appropriate in that scenario? I want to be careful recommending games outright yeah. because Thanks. people's interests are they're they're so varied and wide. But there are there are some games that were really popular during COVID, so they would be easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, that are by some uh, major brands, and what it allows them to do is interact within the game together. And then there's the communication element that they can have between each other. So it takes like maybe the idea of a phone call or the idea of playing a video game and kind of smushes it all up together and they can kind of have that environment. And in the game that's coming to my mind where you're kind of creating a world and um, uh, in a safe world, in a world that um, promotes some, um, you know, not necessarily the more negative things in life, you know, promotes friendships and and building things up and, and making things pretty, if you will. and. Um, you know, so there's that. And Great. I also I also want to point out, you don't need a big fancy schmancy board game, a mm. deck of cards, some dominoes, some dice. That right there is where you can start. So I know sometimes looking at board games, it can get a little overwhelming. Mm. Um, go back, start with what you remember, what you know, and then go from there, you know. Right, right. Because I really, I heard that, you know, it, it is the game, but it's also what's happening around the game that makes it meaningful. So I appreciate that so much. Um, one final question before we bring everyone back, and please feel free to ask your questions here. Um, I see there's another comment that came up. We routinely play Pictionary win, lose, or draw at family events and winter um, gathering of friends. You can meet outside or inside. All ages can play, and it brings lots of laughter. And Oh, I love that. And I love what you said about laughter, Bria, about how, how the, all of the benefits that it has for us. It's like um, m your prescription is laughter sometimes for some of those uh, times when we just get a little down and we need to rise above it. Okay. So the question that's on my mind now is, and these are none of the questions we prepared, and I hope that's okay. <laughs> But the question now is the evolution of games. What do you mm -hmm. see? Now we've had this huge burst in the bubble of games. It's really opened up. What do you see as the next thing? Well, I think there's going to be even a bigger growth. Um, unfortunately, during the pandemic, some of the uh, board game stores, the more community-minded um, elements, they didn't make it. We saw that in our area, in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, and when the pandemic hit, we lost that community board game cafe where people could go try out something, have a bite to eat, meet with people. So I'm hoping to see a resurgence in that so that mm -hmm. folks have a safe place to go now that we can pass the bits back and forth to each other again soon, if not already. And then um, I also believe that for those folks that have been playing games inside and rising, rising the uh, the uh, number of people that are playing, I think that people like me are going to go out and try to spread the word of board games. It's kind of hard to keep us quiet once we discover the hobby. So I do believe that um, that'll improve. And I also hope that some of the technological advancements that allow people that face barriers to getting to local game stores or meeting with groups, I hope that those technological um, challenges we overcame, I hope they continue so that we can continue to involve more people in the gaming community. Right. That's a very good point. Well, well, game on. I am really excited to uh, explore what game is right for me. I'm feeling something educational in the video world, like finding a way to gamify something I want to learn. And then I'm feeling something really intergenerational for our family and families when they come together. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you for the inspiration, Bria. Yeah, I'm going to bring our friends here um, in, our friends Pam and Jessica. Um, Pam, of course, is with um, NAMI and Jessica with the Healing Solutions Counseling with the Jewish Family Services of Western North Carolina. And um, I hear we have a little feedback. So if we're not talking, maybe you can just mute yourself and then unmute when you talk. I know that can be tricky. So... Great. Thank you so much. So, you know, we understand that people are joining us from anywhere in the country and there are services anywhere in the country for whether you're having a temporary kind of a low point or if you have a 
a longer term, more chronic mental health condition, that there is help available. And um, we wanted to have a little fun with some things people can put into action right away, but also dive deeper into the types of services and supports that are available. So Pam, I'm going to start with you if you want to unmute yourself and tell us about NAMI and what you have to offer. All right. Thank you very much. And um, I just wanted to say I'm really enjoying this program. I do play games on my phone, probably a little too much, <laughs> but I've always enjoyed playing games. So um, I loved all that you shared today, Bree. Thank you. And I love having the opportunity to talk about NAMI. Um, I've been involved with NAMI for well over 20 years, so I'm kind of a historical figure at our office <laughs> here in Asheville, and it's just made a huge difference in my life and the life of my family. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and we are the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. We're dedicated to building better lives for the millions of Americans um, who um, are affected by mental illness. And NAMI all started way back in 1979 with a group of families, a small group of families just gathered around a kitchen table um, trying to support each other and figure out what the heck was going on in their lives. And it has become the nation's leading voice on mental health with over 600 affiliates across the U.S who work in communities to raise awareness and provide support and education that was not previously available um, to anyone. So um, it's been proven that people who have support and education and access to treatment, housing and jobs have the best chance of recovery and leading full productive lives. Of course, there's no cure for mental illness, but lots of people have learned to manage their illness and they're able to go on and live the best life that they can. All NAMI affiliates, including NAMI Western Carolina here in Asheville, North Carolina, are a nonprofit groups that depend on donations and grants and membership for our funding. However, you do not have to be a member to attend any of our presentations, classes, or support groups. Right now, all of our offerings are virtual but maybe it won't be long before we're back to having in-person groups. So NAMI's mission, first of all, is to provide support for anyone living with a mental health issue, as well as their families, friends, and caregivers. There's just nothing like being able to um, go to a group and share your experiences with people who get it. Um, it's just so valuable to know that you're not alone, and you are not alone, believe me. All of NAMI's signature support groups are led by trained facilitators who have lived experience, either as a peer, someone who's living with a mental health issue, or as a family member or caregiver. And the groups are um, consistent in the way they're conducted. So no matter what state you live in, your support group will look just like every other NAMI support group. Our affiliate here in Asheville has connection peer support groups and family support groups that meet twice a month. And we also offer an anxiety support group for anyone having difficulty managing anxiety. One of our volunteers is a retired psychologist and he offered to lead this group for us. So we're very happy to be able to offer this kind of support as well. NAMI also believes that education is vital in helping to reduce stigma, which can be a huge barrier to people who are trying to recover and re-enter the community. It can also be a barrier to anyone who's considering getting help for their issues. Uh, so we have free education classes and presentations that we offer to the community such as our eight-week family-to-family class for family members, friends, and caregivers of anyone living with a serious mental illness. Um, and everyone who takes this class, including myself, describe it just as life-changing. And I highly recommend it for anyone who has a loved one with a mental health issue. Another class called NAMI Basics is just like family-to-family, -family, but it's for families with children um, under 18 who are having behavioral or mental health issues. 
We also have presentations for faith communities, schools, and other organizations. And we have speakers who participate in crisis intervention training for law enforcement and first responders to help them learn to um, de-escalate um, any crisis situations involving mental health concerns. And I wanted to mention that in our support groups and our classes, education classes, we do spend a lot of time talking about self-care, which is so important, um, especially when you're navigating the challenges of dealing with mental illness. We actually teach breathing exercises that we call belly breathing and meditation or being in the moment. And we encourage everyone to find something, whether it's art, music, dance, gardening, gaming, hiking, whatever, um, that will help you relax and stay strong so that you can take care of your own mental health. So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about NAMI today. Well, we are really fortunate to have NAMI as a resource in our community and to have you and your leadership and volunteerism to create this resource. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. And I see behind you your little friend, um, the cat. <laughs> and I, I would be remiss not to mention the healing powers of animals. Um, and uh, while I'm talking, I'll just share a little bit about what's happening with AARP. Wherever you're watching from, you can go to this aarp.org near you. And there are going to be really interesting programs that are in your community. Whereas this was um, inspired in Western North Carolina, there are programs inspired all across the country. And one we have coming up in June is about about the animal human bond. And so if people are interested in that and kind of how animals can help us to age successfully in our community, check it out. You can go to that website and learn more about that, that series that's coming up. And now I will uh, pass the baton to Jessica, our uh, co-inspiration -inspi behind this series. <laughs> Jessica, tell us what sort of mental health support people can find at Healing Solutions Counseling. Sure, I'm happy to share. I, before I do that, I just wanted to thank Bria for the videos and give my little t gaming tip, which is that if you download, um, I don't know how specific we want to get to advocate for certain apps, but um, a very well-known media uh, newspapers um, crossword puzzle app, they do have a free mini puzzle every day. And I do it every day. Um, it comes, it goes live at 10 o'clock at night, um, which is uh, early for me. So I always do it at like 10.01. I challenge myself to try to do it as quickly as I can. And um, it's like five, five questions across, five questions down. Over the weekends, it gets a little bigger, but it's apparently, I've never paid for it. Um, I should, but um, it's a great, free, fun, quick crossword puzzle. So that's my contribution to the, the gaming discussion. Um, but thank you very much um, for an opportunity to talk about um, our Healing Solutions Counseling Program here at Jewish Family Services of Western North Carolina. Um, here at our JFS, we offer um, clinical counseling with licensed clinical social workers. And um, we uh, have a, a thriving um, practice of older adults we do accept Medicare and a number of different insurances. And if counseling is something that you know, you've been thinking about, it's important to take that first step. And what I would encourage you to do is, um, you know, if you're not local to this area, um, to call an agency that can refer you to a, a, something that is appropriate to what you're looking for. Um, and uh, there are Jewish Family Services agencies all, all over the country. I'm sure any of those agencies would be happy to connect you through a case manager or uh, other referrals. Um, any family service program, any area agency on aging program would be able to refer someone to appropriate counseling. Um, it's important to you know, be ready to take that first step. And so there are agencies out there that, um, that are there for you. Um, for whatever your whatever your needs are. Um, so thank you very much. 
There we go. That's great. And I think it's really exceptional to know that there's Medicare funded mental health services for people. And it's, it, you know, you might have to dig for it a little bit, um, but you can find it through referrals. And it's such a gift that our Jewish Family Services offers this locally. And I know it even includes telehealth now. Is that right, Jessica? Yes, I should have mentioned, yes, we're doing a lot of telehealth work right now. Um, and, you know, you mentioned animals before. We have found that clients really like um, being at home because they can have their animal with them. Um, and that is very therapeutic for people. We were allowing some animals into the office and we would continue to do that. Um, but we have seen a lot of animals on camera. Um, telehealth has been a great gift. I think for in many areas, um, not only mental, but also uh, physical health. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility now during the pandemic for um, insurance coverage for that. And there's advocacy happening at a, a larger level in Washington to continue that. Um, Great. In the benefits. So. Yeah, that's great. And with that advocacy goes the advocacy for access to the broadband that can allow for the infrastructure for the telehealth. And so your organizations like AARP and others are definitely fighting that fight with you. Um, thank you, Jessica. That was wonderful. And um, let's cap it off with you, Bria. And what do area agencies on aging have to offer in WNC and beyond? Absolutely. Well, I am with the Land of Sky Area Agency on Aging, and we promote the highest level of well-being in older adults and their families by partnering with um, organizations to provide a comprehensive system of opportunities, services, and protective services. Um, the AAA is a leader in catalysts and older adults to lead more independent and vibrant lives. And no matter where you're located, because I know we've got folks from all over, you really should reach out to your local area agency on aging and see what it has to offer. AAAs are part of a national network of aging agencies, which were established by the Older Americans Act, and they work together to strengthen community care for older adults. Now at Land of Sky, we believe that everyone in the region can age with dignity, purpose, and connection to community. And I am confident that your local area agency on aging, if you're outside of the Land of Sky region, share similar values and may be able to provide you with the support and programs that can contribute to those goals. <laughs> There's nothing I would want to say after that. That was a great way to bring our series to a close. Thank you to all of our presenters and guests who have joined us. Um, please uh, feel free to share these videos. They exist indefinitely on Facebook and YouTube. Please go ahead and check out AARP near you so we can see you at another event in the future. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone.